latency test of AV in on the DJI with the photodiode covered here. Test copter here in my little light box. Switch on and off. The switch is the red line and you will see uh, an increase in the yellow line which represents the photodiode soon. You see here the big bump is at around 75 milliseconds in this run. What I'm going to do is now is power cycle the goggles and see if this changes this because there is the theory that those goggles are quite unreliable on the AV in when it comes to latency. Settings and AV in. Reset it. What do we see now? Yeah, and that's a pretty good demonstration of this random latency effect on the DJI goggles. Just get a few samples. What we have now is, I'd say, around 40 milliseconds. Oh, it's faster now. 30. And of course, these kinds of tests, you always find a random spot in the frame. The frame is 70 or 20 milliseconds in width. So here we just look for the lowest number on, on the bump up, which was around 30 milliseconds. So on this trial now, with rebooting I got 30 milliseconds, before that it was 70 and that's just not reliable enough and on the field you have no really means of measuring the latency. I mean there is one easy trick without an oscilloscope to measure if the latency is acceptable for you. Put the quad on the head whilst wearing the goggles and just look around. Your brain will tell you if the latency is acceptable because if you move your head, your eyes and your senses want to see the same, feel the same. And if there's a, a latency higher than 20 milliseconds, you should be able to tell it. If it's 40, 50 or higher, you for sure will be able to tell the latency. Uh, so the sweet spot is around 20 milliseconds. That's also in VR gaming. Uh, 20 milliseconds is the thing you're aiming for. Higher and you puke. <laughs> Okay, the second test run now is the thing that you should be here for. If you use the DJI system as intended in the digital mode, there is one important thing. First of all, I will show you that their latency claim, I mean, they put a millisecond reading in the OSD uh, to tell you it's 25 or 30 or 40 milliseconds. This claim is actually true and that's nice. But there's one exception. If you Say you are in the low latency mode and you have 25 or 30 milliseconds and fly with this and then you want to try the high quality mode. You switch the high quality which also switches the air unit to the high quality mode and then you immediately fly and you get terrible latency which I can show you until you power cycle the, the air unit then it changes to normal uh, acceptable latency again. So this is a phenomenon. If you test out this thing and use it to fly in the low latency mode and like it, and then you say, hey, I want to have better quality, try the high latency mode. Then you fly with the high latency without power cycling the air unit. You might be totally disappointed by the high latency, which can be 70 or 100 milliseconds in my tests. I've seen such high numbers as well and you immediately fall back to low latency and forget about the high quality mode. Which you shouldn't because in my flights I really prefer to fly in the high quality mode. If you don't fly acro freestyle it's totally fine because it's around 30 to 40 milliseconds which is really not that high. So let's check or let's, let me prove uh, my findings to you once again. So this thing here powers my 
air unit. The camera is hidden here. Glass to glass latency. Glass of the lens to glass of your goggles. That's the important stuff. Let's check what we have now. I already moved the cursor to the thing I measured. It says... So the dotted line is 33 milliseconds away from my turning on the light. And you see it's, it moves, it has a variance. Sometimes it's around 30 milliseconds. Here it's a bit further up, like 38 milliseconds. And we also, if we take a look in the goggles, down there the reading, we have 31, 30, 35. So it is a bit jumpy, but that's totally fine. I'm in the high quality mode. So now switch to low latency, which immediately displays this misleading 20 milliseconds. It, it jumps from 90 to 27, 28, something like this. So the goggles claim 20 milliseconds. What do we get if we measure? Ah, that's now... Yeah, but at least it proves we are not at 20. I will show you where 20 or let's say 25 milliseconds would be here. And under no circumstance we get the nice low latency 25 milliseconds. No matter how hard I try. Now I unplug the air unit to power cycle it, force the power cycle. You will also see that the link is broken. The LEDs here are, now it's in public mode 8 and then it goes to channel 1. Yeah, channel 1. We're broadcasting again. It again shows 25 milliseconds and yeah, I like it when things work out this high, as I want them to. Now we have the latency which is advertised directly in the goggles, the 25. Okay, and once more, now let's say I want to change the setting to high quality. High quality, it immediately displays 30 without power cycling the air unit. And now we're much higher than advertised. Come on. Yeah, it's around the 50 milliseconds and not the... What does it display? Not the 30 milliseconds. So by now you should get my point. As I said in a previous test, it was way over, way over there at 70 or 100 milliseconds even. And if you fly there, you will not be happy with the high quality mode. Yeah, just one more proof of concept. Unplug, replug, wait some time until we have the link again. It always goes to 8 first, which seems to be public channel, and then it goes to the channel of the air unit 1. Okay, test it again. Yeah, and now, so after a fresh boot of the air unit, you're always you can rely on the latency being as good as advertised. Because now we have a latency of yeah, really around 30 or sometimes even lower. What's this? Let's say 27. It's higher. So around the 30 millisecond mark has advertised down there. See now it's 33 and that's that's correct. Okay, in case you wonder how the goggles look, they look awesome, don't they? I think they look great. Finally, the days where we looked like total nerds are gone and now we look like some kind of superheroes. Ant-Man Ant -Man or something like this. By the way, I noticed no difference in latency whether you are recording or not. I've seen another guy 
sorry, I forgot your name. I will link your name and your videos. Who found out, maybe it was an older firmware, who found a five millisecond change from without recording, it was like 30 and with recording on both sides, it was 35 milliseconds. So at least this thing is fixed. I saw no difference between recording or no recording on the latency side. Just wanted to get this out here as well. So this video is kind of unplanned and a bit rushed. I wanted to do a very comprehensive feature packed uh, review, which I still want to do, but I thought this thing just should go out as soon as I found it out because when you fly with it, you should have the optimal settings and yeah, just try the high quality mode more often. I really liked it because on the low latency mode, yeah, it's a bit faster, but also it, if you fly over grass, it's like YouTube codec again. Uh, the grass gets all mushy and the details get lost. So it's really not, not that much of an advantage from a good analog signal to a low latency digital mode. I mean, they are still more quality, but now that I have these good goggles, I want to see all the details that I can, which enriches the flight experience totally. But this is all gonna be stated or said in the full video, which should be out in a week or so. I already have a lot of information scattered in a text file and I can link you this text file here. It's a living document. Uh, why not showing you this document already? It takes away some points of my video, but Anyhow, if you want to see this info now, go ahead and click the link. Um, or if you prefer to watch it uh, in full, on a full screen in full HD uh, with popcorn, then uh, please wait for my video. Um, speaking of which, be sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, also take the bell icon, it doesn't hurt. Thanks a lot for watching, see you next time, bye for now. basic idea of my oscilloscope measurements. I have a 12 volt LED. The 12 volt power is probed with this probe here, which is the red channel. And if you switch it on, it goes from zero to 12 volt. So this is the step up. And you can, the good thing with an oscilloscope, you can zoom in very close and measure even micro or nanoseconds. Then as a second channel we have this light detecting diode. It basically changes the resistance if it sees light. And you can display this on the yellow channel. So enable yellow channel, place the light sensing diode in this box with the light source. Now you can measure the time it takes from switching on, which is the red line, to the yellow line increasing. So this is the trigger event, power increase. We can move over here and around 20 to 30 microseconds until we see the full yellow line, which is mostly caused by the rise time of the diode, but the rise time with... So here the light diode starts to sense light after only like seven microseconds. Microseconds are a thousand of a millisecond, so <laughs> that's really, really far zoomed in. Okay, just to put it into perspective, so one division is a millisecond and you see the yellow and the red line, they stick together quite good. This means for our test, the light and the light diode, they have almost no own latency for our measurement. That's, that's what's important. So now I can put something in between the light and the light diode, namely the DJI FPV system. 
and see how long this light travels through the digital system to the goggles and the goggles can display light and this is measured by the diode. This is the glass to glass latency test, not invented by me.